of this song down by the riverside was inspired by this passage of Isaiah that I shared with you today. And our brothers and sisters of the African American tradition found these words as a motivational sense of music to help us try to think and rethink the way we deal with the world around us. We can go out and be the Hitler and the Napoleon of the world and try to conquer. We can be like Jesus Christ and win. God's given you the choice. You've got to begin this Christmas. Can you lay down your sword and shield and follow God's will for your life? Can you lay down the burdens that come with having to be right and having to win and follow God's will for your life? This should be a theme song for every Christian that calls Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I ain't going to study war no more. I'm going to study God. This Christmas season, Christians, let us lay down our sword and shield. Let us study God as we stand and say. And Jerusalem. 
in days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. The nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. <clears throat> o house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. May God have God's blessing to the reading of the word. Just this morning when Mr. Joe Cruz came into church, he showed me a flyer, an experience he got to go to this weekend, the 82nd commemoration of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. 82 years ago, the disaster and the destruction and the loss of life that took place December 7th, December 8th, excuse me, no, no, I was right, December 8th is my sister's birthday, <laughs> that's right. And you know, even though I even wasn't around when that event took place, I still feel the sadness and the gloom and the grief for the loss of life that occurred on that day. And obviously, as a world, we haven't come to this place where the prophecy of Isaiah gives us where we go to God's mountain and learn of His ways and put away our swords and our spears and learn to make war no more. In Sunday school this morning, we had a conversation that dwelled around prejudice and classification of human beings. The conversation started with the whole biblical lesson of David versus Goliath. And David saying that this Philistine Goliath was not a whole lot different than a lion or a tiger or a bear. And that David didn't view this huge human being as a human being but rather as just an animal that needed to be defeated. Doesn't that sound a lot like today's world? When it comes to those who have different lifestyles than us, different beliefs than us, different economic or social status than us, we treat them as less human. 
And then that gives us justification to be able to treat them not as God's children, but as dirt. To look down upon them. To judge them. To not bestow our love or kindness upon them. Imagine if God did that to us. Imagine if Jesus said, no, I'm only dying for the saints, not for the sinners. It's time for God's people to come to God's mountain. To come to God's Zion, where God lives. And not to simply learn of his ways and his paths, but to make that part of how we travel through this journey we call God. Biblically speaking, Jerusalem is a very interesting place. It is there in the very first chapter, or in the very first book of the Bible. And it is where God restores God's kingdom at the very last book of the Bible. Many people probably don't know, but everyone knows that in Jerusalem there is this big golden dome. It's been called a mosque over the years, a temple and church. But inside of this dome is the very rock in which Abraham about sacrificed his only son, Isaac. That's a long, long time ago. And if you remember the story, Abraham was just trying to be faithful to his God. And God had to interrupt Abram and say, don't, don't, don't kill your son. And it was there where Abraham made an altar. And that altar is what we know of as today, where the Golden Dome is in Jerusalem. <coughs> Over the course of human history, Jerusalem, more than any other city in the entire world, is where most wars have taken place. The city is now divided into quadrants as a Muslim section, a Hebrew, Jewish section, a Christian section, even a Palestinian section. And it has been the place more than any other place in the world in which people from all over this planet go and make pilgrimage to see its history, maybe be touched by God's presence, and to learn of His ways, and to follow in His paths. Isaiah's prophecy has proven in human history to be true, that Jerusalem is the place where people go to find God. And it's where all peoples from all different backgrounds and races and nationalities go to meet the creator of the universe. In the Christian faith, this passage from Isaiah has been interpreted to meet God's Son. The one born in Bethlehem and the one who was murdered just outside the gates of Jerusalem and who rose again. Christianity believes that this passage applies to Christ because Christ was the living Torah of God. He followed all the instructions of the Old Testament and he said to people, I didn't come to annihilate or do away with the Old Testament. I came to fulfill it. And how did he fulfill it? He followed the commandments. He didn't steal. He didn't lie. He didn't kill. He honored the Sabbath and his earthly mom and dad. 
He never took God's name in vain. He never put anything in front of God. And he followed God's will even to death on a cross. And he, like the Old Testament, told us to follow in his path. Or as Isaiah says, to walk in the light. In our Sunday school discussion today about prejudice, racism, hate, and classification, one of the class members said, well, if we simply would love others the way we wish to be loved, this wouldn't happen, would it? And the class had to agree. So what is it, body of Christ? We claim to believe in this Lord and Savior. We know that our salvation depends upon Him. And yet we take His commandments as suggestions. And we judge those that park in our parking places at church or sit in our pews or come in dirty clothes or without showering or bathing. Or maybe it's the kind of dress that someone wears that we, that we judge. Or how they wear their hair or their makeup or whatever reason we have. Maybe it's a political disagreement that we use to differentiate from God's children and make them less than us. Or maybe it's a discussion or disagreement we've had with someone in our past and we don't agree with them, so we're going to just treat them like dirt. And again, I say to the body of Christ, what if God used this mentality upon us? What if God used this kind of judgment system that we use against each other, against us? Would we be saved? Would he have died for us? Can we say, Father, forgive them? They know not what they do. That's what the light did for us. My problem with Christmas in 2023 is that it's about the lights and the gifts and the presents and the parties. And it's not about the reason for the season. Today's attendance in this room is a great indication of this. Because you know the vast majority of Americans are going to celebrate Christmas. But how many of them are going to walk in the light? And one of the conclusions that we came to in today's Sunday school class is how many Christians who claim Jesus as their Lord and Savior are going to come to the light and walk in the light? Or are we going to think that the ways of the world is where we find our wisdom and instruction and our salvation? Or are we going to find it on God's holy mountain? In Jerusalem. In Zion. Where God dwells. We have seen in our past individuals who walk in the light and who go down in history. I think of the battles that Martin Luther King Jr. fought when I was a single digit young man and fought against the powers of America, the presidents, the police forces, the social 
concept of what was supposed to be right and what was supposed to be wrong and challenged Americans as well as Christians with his dream. A dream in which every person would be judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. We talk about Pearl Harbor to open this, this message. That's 82 years old. That dream of Martin Luther King Jr.'s is over 50 years old. We have to say, brothers and sisters, that it is still not a reality. And I think we all have to take our portion of responsibility of why that isn't an actuality. Because we have walked in the light. We haven't submitted our will to God's holy mountain. We're still loving the ways of the world. This message of Isaiah is repeated throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. The urge and the exhortation to come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths, is still being ignored. For it's not the lack of God's effort that we don't know the instruction. It's not the lack of God's pronunciation that we don't hear His Word. It's our unwillingness to give up our own desires and goals and dreams of life and follow His. I imagine Jesus had a choice too. I imagine that's what the temptation of Scripture talks about. He'd been in the wilderness for 40 days. He hadn't eaten a thing. He was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, you can turn those rocks into loaves of bread. What would you do? Hey, you can be the most powerful person in all the world. You can rule over all the nations of the world. You can say how it all goes on this planet. What would you do? You can throw yourself down, Son of God, and the angels grab you before even your foot is dashed against the stone. Would you give it a shot? Would you test God? Or would you follow God's will for your life? You know, when I hear about the war in the Middle East, when I hear about young people being killed in our streets, I wonder when we're going to lay down our swords and our shields. When we're going to finally see what violence does for our culture. When are we going to learn to be like Christ and be a peacemaker? Peacemaking doesn't mean you just say yes to everything. But peacemaking does mean that you don't pull out your sword and strike someone down. I think it's time for God's church to go down by the riverside. You're not going to study war no more. Instead, study the ultimate peacemaker. Study the ultimate one that knew how to resolve conflicts and to know how to make peace between nations and between nations and God. It is Jesus that through the cross made peace for all of us and that our sins are not held accountable to us anymore. And yet here we are at war. 